But don't forget that this is also a romance story, and every good romance story needs a strong romantic male lead. And what's a better romantic male lead than your brother? I should see a doctor after this. But first, this is best Christopher. Okay, first of all, let's address the elephants in the room. Jeb Stewart Adams is clearly a 25-year-old man and not a teenager. I'm sorry, I know that's really just nitpicking, and I also know that having young adults portray teenagers is a fairly common form of acting, especially back in the 1980s. And oftentimes, it can be very convincing. But with Adams... No, this is a man, not a teenager. Now granted, Mason Dye was not entirely convincing at portraying Christopher aging from 14 to 17 either. At least not as much as Shipka was at portraying Kathy aging from 12 to 15. But it is a lot more convincing than Adam's. And of course, there's the no incest issue, but I already covered that in detail with Kathy, so why don't we move on? So, is Adam's Christopher a step up from Swanson's Kathy? Well, for what it is, Adam's portrayal is not half bad and has a much better understanding of the character than Swanson's Kathy. Adams really embraces the role of the intelligent but overtrusting oldest doll ganger sibling, and to his credit, does show some form of development by the end of the story, learning not to be as trusting and growing in some other way, which I'll tell you about a little later. Plus, he and Chrissy Swanson look a lot alike, so they do make a convincing brother and sister in this movie. But for all its strengths, there is one important element of the character that Adam's portrayal unfortunately severely lacks. I mean, besides that, of course. No, what I'm talking about is Christopher's leadership skills. In my opinion, the four main traits of a good leader are confidence, competence, compassion, and charisma. And it's not to say that Adams doesn't have any of these traits, they just aren't very strong. Like, take his confidence, for instance. Sure, he's not a coward like Swanson, but he always seems so doubtful in himself, like he's never sure whether his plans will work or completely go to hell. I thought about it for weeks, Kathy. It's the only thing I've been thinking about. Christopher, if Mother's here, we have to find her. We gotta tell her. We will. Tonight. Us. And she'll be coming back. And when she does, this will all make sense. We have to we'll barricade the door, or we'll hide in the attic. She won't come up there. It'll be all right. Mom will make sure of that. So will I. Di, on the other hand, just seems to have much more faith in himself when he's making a plan or encountering trouble. His attitude is basically, yeah, I got nothing to fear. Your ass is grass. <laughs> You're not gonna cut one strand of Kathy's hair. My name's not Boy. It's Christopher. What did you say? You said my name is Christopher. Same as my father's. Now give it to me. No. Give it to me this instant. If you insist. <laughs> now to his credit, Adams actually does start acting that way also near the end of the movie, sounding both genuinely confident in himself and assertive towards danger. So, while I am impressed that he did manage to learn something at the end of the film, it still does not change the fact that he just does not have that much confidence in himself overall. I think part of that may be because, while Christopher is still a quick planner in the original, he may be a little too quick of one. What do I mean by this? I mean, whenever he makes a plan, he never seems to consider what phase two will be. Like early in the movie, when Corinne has not come to visit them in a while, he and Kathy begin to fear that maybe the grandmother has locked her up somewhere too. So Christopher plans to pry through the bars on the window and sneak out to go looking for her without the grandfather finding out. Okay, but where are you going to start looking for her? And how exactly are you going to keep the grandfather from finding out? Yeah, you need to think through this a little more, buddy. Or near the end of the movie, Christopher decides that they can use Corinne and Bart's wedding as a cover-up to escape. Okay, great plan, but where are you going to go afterwards? How are you going to support yourselves? What if he sees us? Okay, see us if he's dead.
Now, Mason Dye didn't always use his common sense either, like when he decided to go exploring the house after the party instead of returning to the attic like he promised Corinne, which goes about as well as you'd expect. If you ever do that again, I will whip you! And Kathy too! But as the movie progressed, he stepped up his game and took the time to think through his plans, considering the logistics, the necessary steps, and the potential outcomes beforehand. I wish we could run away tonight. No, we need money. Lots of it. So when we escape, we can go wherever we want. We can't take too much or she might notice. All right, you go in without me. I need to check outside. No, but if something happens to you, I have to make sure we can get out. We wait till dinner, when all the servants and family are in the kitchen or dining room. Then we catch up by the lake and head to the depot for the evening train. In short, he looks before he leaps, and I say a cautious leader is a better one. But what I really think makes Dye stand out as the better leader is his compassion and charisma. It's not to say that Adams doesn't have these traits either. He's kind and supportive towards the twins, but more in the manner of an older brother, which is okay because that's what he is. But Dai acts more like a father to the twins, always having their best interests at heart, comforting them in grief, and allowing himself to go through hardships so they don't have to. And considering the twins probably need a father now more than ever, I think this is a very important role to take on. Though at one point in the original, Adams does feed the twins his own blood, and yeah, that's a pretty fatherly thing to do. Kudos to you, Adams. As for charisma, Adams does have a few funny lines here and there, but he's a bit more quiet and serious, while Dai has this cocky but charming side to him that just makes him a ton of fun. I guess that the last thing I really want to talk about here is the acting. While Adams is a good actor, if a little stiff, and is able to sufficiently convey the primary emotion necessary for each scene, Dai takes it a step further and is able to convey multiple emotions in a scene at once. Take this sequence, for instance. This is when Corinne comes to visit the children for the first time in months, and Christopher finally loses his patience and calls Corinne out for all the crap she's put them through. So what's to become of us, Mom? How much longer do we continue living in this prison? Prison? You come back with gifts for us, Mom. Do you think they can make up for what we've lost? You were wrong to go away, to stay away for so long. I, I don't care why. When you're older, you'll understand. We are older, Mom. M look at us. I'm not a kid anymore. And Kathy, does she even look like a little girl? I got you this magnifying glass. It's an antique. You said we would be up here for one night. Then a few days, a month. It's been more than two years, Mom! You think your presents are going to make up for what we've lost? What we're losing? Do you see what I'm talking about here? Adams only sounded like he was angry in this scene. And that's okay because that was the primary emotion he was supposed to have. But Dai took even further and conveyed not just anger, but also betrayal at his mother for constantly letting them down, and also frustration desperation about their childhoods being lost in captivity. And that's pretty dang impressive. So, in short, Adam's Christopher is definitely a step up from Swanson's Kathy, being sympathetic, having a much better understanding of the character, and showing at least some form of development by the end of the movie. But for somebody who's supposed to be a leader, he does not show much reason for why anybody should follow him. Dai just had everything you could possibly ask for in a good leader, plus a wider range of emotion, and I think that that is more than point worthy. Point goes to the new. Damn you! Ooh.